Changiz Khan, he was the ruler of the Mongol Empire. Tutmus, he was the ruler of the Egyptian Empire. Darius, he was the ruler of the Persian Empire. Alexander, he was the ruler of the Macedonia Empire. Napoleon, he was the ruler of the French Empire. Pampulus, he was the ruler of the Roman Empire. Julius, he was the ruler of the Republic of Roman Empire. Sheng, he was the ruler of the Chinese Empire. Rurik, he was the ruler of the Russian Empire. Attila, he was the ruler of the Hunic Empire. Charles, he was the ruler of the Frankish Empire. And from amongst the companions, there was a soldier. There was a commander. There was a conqueror. He crushed the superpowers of his time. He crushed the Persian Empire. He crushed the Romans. He conquered Iraq. He conquered Iran. He conquered Armenia. He conquered Jordan. He conquered Syria. The undefeated commander. The undefeated ruler. The sword from the swords of Allah Azza wa Jalla. This is Khalid bin Walid radiallahu an. That opened the books of history. And you will come to an understanding. That many gangsters, mafias, mobsters, rulers, generals, commanders, conquerors, fighters, warriors have come and gone. Some, they were known for their plan of attack. Some, they were known for their ploy. Some, they were known for their tactics. Some, they were known for their fortitude. Some, they were known for their courage. And others, they were known for their military expeditions. And those guys who want to be gangsters, clubbing, pubbing, popping pills, Open the books of history and you will come to an understanding that you ain't no gangster. You just a fake wannabe Scarface. In the sight of men, the wannabe gangsters, these guys hold some weight. But in the sight of the king of all kings, the master of the day of judgment, the one the only Allah, the Almighty, these guys are more lighter than a mosquito's wing. And this is why I say, those guys who want to be gangsters, clubbing, pubbing, popping pills, no fast, no prayer, no nothing. You jack people, you rob people, Fear Allah, fear Allah, fear Allah. And if you don't fear Allah, then wait for the punishment of Allah to descend. You oppress women. You beat women. You go around slandering women. And all of a sudden, man thinks he's a bad man. You listen to the devil's music. You listen to Mavado, Vibes Cartel. You cruise around with your boys, with your girlfriends, up and down the road, Manchester, London, blasting the devil's music, smoking weed. And all of a sudden, man thinks it's 50 cent. You wake up in the morning, plaster your face with MAC makeup. You carry a rusty Chanel bag. 
straightens out her hair with the GHD. Then she puts on the fake lashes, the long nails, the hoops around her ear. And then she puts on her high heels. She puts on her hijab with 10 inside it, the camel hump. And then she puts a abaya on. And then she puts on the Chanel perfume. And then she walks the walk. And she talks the talk. She likes what she sees. Why? Because all eyes are me. And then she gets picked up, dropped off to one of these shisha lounges. Off comes the abaya. Off comes the hijab. She gets her phone out and she puts it to the ear. You know and I know no one's on the other side. She puts a pipe in her mouth, thinking she's some Jamaican yardie. And all of a sudden, girl thinks she's Beyonce. Fear Allah. Fear Allah. Fear Allah. You slander the shiuch. And all of a sudden, man thinks he's Imam Al-Bukhari. But your return is to Allah the Almighty. I ask, is there a problem with Abu Bakr radiallahu an? Is there a problem with Umar radiallahu an? With Uthman radiallahu an? With Ali radiallahu an? With Fatima radiallahu anha? With Aisha radiallahu anha? The answer is no. Then why are man's following Dr. Drake? Then why are man's following Drake? Then why are girls following Beyonce? From amongst the companions, there was a companion. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the one who has favored me the most with his wealth, with his company is Abu Bakr radiallahu an. And if I was to take a friend other than my Lord, I would have taken Abu Bakr as such. Ali radiallahu an said, the best of people after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam is Abu Bakr radiallahu an. And there was another companion. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, that if there was a prophet after me, it would have been Umar radiallahu an. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, O son of Khattab, I swear by the one whose hands my life is in, you do not walk down a path except that the shaitan sees you and he turns directions other than yours. Ali radiallahu an said, and the best of people after Abu Bakr radiallahu an is Umar radiallahu an. I ask, who was their leader? Who was their commander? Who was their general? It was none other than the chosen one, the blessed one, the noble one, the forgiving one, the bearer of glad tidings, the seal of all prophets, the imam of all the prophets, the leader of the companions, the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. The very man that in the middle of a battle, one of the companions sword breaks, he sallallahu alayhi wasallam throws a stick to him and the stick turns into a sword. The very man that in the middle of the battle, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he throws some sand and its sand turns into a storm. The very man that the historians write, 87 battles he has led and 27 battles he has participated himself. In the battle of Badr, in the battle of Uhud, in the battle of Hunayn, in the battle of Ta'if, in the battle of Tabuk, and the battles carry on. And the greatest of men 
to ever step on the surface of this earth after the prophets of Allah alayhi wasalam were the companions of the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam Abu Bakr Umar Uthman Ali Hassan Hussein Thawban Abdullah Abdullah bin Umar Abdullah bin Abbas radiyallahu anhu and from amongst the companions there was a soldier there was a commander there was a conqueror there was a man that is equal to a billion men the undefeated commander the undefeated ruler the undefeated general the undefeated soldier the undefeated warrior he crushed the superpowers of his time he crushed the persian empire he crushed the romans allahu akbar he conquered Iraq, he conquered Iran, he conquered Armenia, he conquered Jordan, he conquered Syria. He became the conqueror of Sham. He became the conqueror of Sham. He was known for his plan of attack. He was known for his ploy. He was known for his leadership. He was known for his courage. He was known for his fortitude. He was known for his military expedition. The very man that the prince of Persia would praise him, the very man that the priest of Byzantine would praise him, the very man who broke nine swords in a battle, the very man that the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave him a title, the very man that Abu Bakr radiallahu an praised, the very man that Umar radiallahu an praised, the very man, Allahu Akbar, who was undefeated in a hundred battles, who was undefeated in a hundred battles, who was undefeated in a hundred battles. This is why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that do not say anything about Khalid bin Walid. Why? Because he's a sword from the swords of Allah Azza wa Jalla. This is why Abu Bakr radiallahu an would say, Oh Quraysh, your lion has attacked another lion and today is the day that he has overpowered them. Today is the day that no woman will give birth to the likes of Khalid bin Walid radiallahu an. This is why the prince of Persia would say that I know more about Khalid bin Walid than any one of you guys. No man is fortunate than he. No man is equal in war than he. Be powerful and strong or be weak or pathetic. But they, but they are defeated when Khalid radiallahu an comes in front of them. This is why the priest of Byzantine would say, that is the standard of this army a black one? Is the commander tall and powerfully built with broad shoulders, with a wide beard and few pox on his face? If this is the case, then beware of fighting with this army. This is why Umar radiallahu an would say that may Allah have mercy upon Abu Bakr radiallahu an. Why? Because he was better judge of a man than me when he came to the likes of Khalid bin Walid radiallahu an. This is why Umar radiallahu an would say that Khalid bin Walid is indeed a commander. This is why Umar radiallahu an would say that let the women's cry over the likes of Khalid bin Walid radiallahu an. This is why the mother of Khalid bin Walid would say that you are better than a million men when their faces were downcast. Brave you were, more braver than a tiger. Generous you were, more generous than an unstoppable river running between mountains. Why? Because this is the commander, this is the conqueror, this is the ruler, this is the general, this is the warrior, this is Khalid bin Walid radiallahu an. Why? Because come the battle of Muta, the Muslims are 3,000, the enemy is 200,000. Picture this in your mind and you will come to a reality. Zaid bin Haritha radiallahu an, he has a flag with him, dashing on the battlefield. The enemies see him, they charge towards him, they overpower him, they strike him with a severe strike and he drops to the ground. When the Muslims saw their leader has dropped, 
when the Muslims saw their commander has dropped, when the Muslims saw that the general has dropped, did they lose hope? No. Why? But they're alive and Allah sustains them. Without any hesitation, Ja'far radiallahu an, he takes the flag, dashing on the battlefield. The enemies see him, they charge towards him, they overpower him, they strike him with a severe strike and off comes his right arm. He takes the flag with the left. The enemy see him. They charge towards him. They strike him with a severe strike and off comes his left arm. He hugs the flag. The flag must not drop. He holds the flag. He hugs the flag. The flag must not drop. There is no right arm. There is no left arm. He's hugging the flag. The enemy see him. They charge towards him. They see him vulnerable. They see him bleeding. They see him struggling. They charge towards him. They overpower him. They strike him with a severe strike and he drops to the ground. When the Muslims saw that their leader has dropped, did they lose hope? No. Why? Because Allah says that do not think those who are slain in the path of Allah as dead, but they're alive and Allah sustains them. Without any hesitation, Abdullah bin Rawaha radiallahu an, he takes the flag, dashing on the battlefield. They charge towards him. They overpower him. They strike him with a severe strike and he drops to the ground. When the Muslims saw that the first commander has dropped, when the Muslims saw that the second commander has dropped, when the Muslims saw that the third commander has dropped, they have no commander, they have no leader, they have no general. What runs through their mind? They do not think those who are slain in the path of Allah as dead, but they're alive and Allah sustains them. Without any hesitation, Zayd bin Arqama radiallahu an, he takes the flag, Confusion on the battlefield. Who is to be the new commander? Who is to be the new leader? He looks towards Khalid bin Walid and he gives the flag to Khalid bin Walid radiallahu an. Now comes the general. Now comes the warrior. Now comes the undefeated fighter. He rearranges the whole army, dashing on the battlefield. The enemy seem thinking, you know what? We have dealt with the first commander. We have dealt with the second commander. We have dealt with the third commander. Let's attack this man. But what did they know about Khalid bin Walid? Why? Because this guy is a sword from the swords of Allah. He takes the first sword, dashing towards the battlefield. The enemy is charging towards him. Anything that comes in his way, he smashes. He takes the first sword. He strikes, it breaks. He takes the second sword, dashing towards them. The enemy is fighting him. He strikes with the second sword and the second sword breaks and the third sword breaks he strikes and the fourth sword breaks he takes the fifth sword he strikes it breaks he takes the sixth sword he strikes it breaks he takes the seventh sword he strikes it breaks he takes the eighth sword he strikes it breaks he takes the ninth sword he strikes it breaks into the enemy run and the muslims retreat from that day rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave him that title the sword from the swords of allah azza wa jalla this is Khalid bin Walid radiallahu an. Why? Because come the battle with one of the superpowers, Khalid bin Walid radiallahu an, he levels up with the Roman commander, the Roman general, and he looks him in the face. The Roman commander says to him, that he looks like poverty, nakedness, starvation, has compelled you to come here. He says, if you wish, I will give you wealth. If you wish, I will give you clothing. If you wish, I will give you food. I will give you and your army everything. You return, you come back the following year and I will do exactly the same thing. Khalid bin Walid, the sword from the sword of Allah, looks him in the eye and you know what he says? He says, you fool. We have not come here because we are hungry. We have not come here because we are starving. We have not come here because we are naked. We have come here to drink your blood as we heard that the blood of the Romans is sweet. This is Khalid bin Walid radiallahu an. Why? Because come the battle with one of the superpowers. Khalid bin Walid radiallahu an, he's on the front line. 
The enemy is holding strong. They look unstoppable. They look untouchable. In the middle of the battlefield, there's, there's a storm. But in reality, in, in the midst of this storm, there's a person on horseback dressed all in black with his face covering, with a shield in his hand and a sword in his hand, dashing towards the enemy, heads towards the Roman front, striking them one by one. People are dropping left, right and center. One of the companions says that a person fights like Khalid bin Walid, but he's not Khalid bin Walid radiallahu an. Khalid radiallahu an, he levels up with this person on horseback and Khalid says stop. And he stops. Tell me who you are. And the person on horseback says that you are the great commander. You are Khalid bin Walid. I out of modesty turn away from you. Khalid says that tell me who you are. And the person on horseback says that I am Khawla. I am the sister of Dirar. My brother has been captured by the enemies and I must fight to free him. Khalid radiallahu an says join us and we will free your brother. This is Khalid bin Walid radiallahu an. This is the commander. This is the son of Walid. This is Khalid bin Walid. This is the sword from the swords of Allah Azza wa Jalla. Why? Because come the battle with one of the superpowers. Khalid bin Walid radiallahu an. He's on the front line. He's standing there with his army on horseback. All of a sudden, the Roman commander on his horse, he leads from his post. He heads towards Khalid bin Walid, levels up with Khalid bin Walid radiallahu an. He's looking in the eyes of Khalid bin Walid radiallahu an. And he says to Khalid bin Walid that tell me the truth. For the free do not lie. The noble do not deceive. Is it true that Allah the Almighty has sent a sword from the heavens and He's given it to your Prophet and your Prophet has given it to you and soon as you unleash it, you, de you destroy the enemy. Khalid radiallahu an says no. But the reality was this commander, this general, he knew Khalid bin Walid was known for his plan of attack. He knew Khalid bin Walid was known for his generalship. He knew Khalid bin Walid was known for his leadership. He knew Khalid bin Walid radiallahu an was the undefeated commander. So he looks towards him and he says that, tell me what do you want me to do? And Khalid radiallahu an says that testify there's no God worthy of worship except Allah and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the messenger of Allah. He says, if I disagree, he goes, then give the payment of jizya. He goes, if I disagree, he goes, then face the sword flowing on the lips of this Roman commander is, I testify, there's no God worthy of worship except Allah and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the messenger of Allah. He joins the army of the Muslims. The enemy see that his their own commander has rebelled against them. The battle takes place, dashing towards the enemy lines. The Roman commander who has just become a Muslim heads towards them, striking them. They overpower him. They strike him with a severe strike. He drops to the ground and his soul extracts. This is Khalid bin Walid radiallahu an. Why? Because the news was traveling all around the peninsula that you know what? Khalid bin Walid is a warrior. Khalid bin Walid is an undefeated commander. The voices are echoing in the Roman general's ear. Why is this man so powerful? So he sends a spy. The spy returns and the Roman commander says that, tell me what did you see? He goes, you know what? By night, they're like monks. By day, they're like warriors. If the son of their leaders were to rob, they will take their hands off and they establish righteousness amongst themselves. Flowing on the lips of the Roman commander is that I'd rather be in the belly of the earth than meet such people for battle. He writes to the Persian Empire before destroying them to bits. He says that accept Islam and you will be saved or give the payment of jizya you and your people will be under our protection if you disagree then we know men who desire death just as your people desire life this is a sword from the swords of allah azza wa jalla 
Why? Because come the battle with one of the superpowers, Khalid bin Walid radiallahu anh, rides to his commander and he says, wait a while and you shall see, I shall send lions on mounts with shining armors, battalions followed by battalions. This is Khalid bin Walid radiallahu anh. Why? Because come the battle of Yarmouk, Khalid bin Walid radiallahu anh, he's standing on the front line. The enemy is holding strong. They look unstoppable. They look untouchable. Allahu Akbar, all of a sudden, one of his companions of Khalid bin Walid radiallahu anh says, that look at the size of the army. Look how powerful they are. Listen to the wording of Khalid bin Walid radiallahu anh. This should be written in gold. Why? Because Khalid bin Walid radiallahu anh says, the victory lies not in the number of men, but it lies in the help of Allah Azza wa Jalla. This is Khalid bin Walid radiallahu an. Why? Because one of the battles, Khalid bin Walid is informed that you know what? The enemy will poison you. Khalid bin Walid radiallahu an says, bring this poison to me. The poison is presented to Khalid bin Walid radiallahu an. He takes this poison, he recites a dua and he drinks this poison. No effect is taken on Khalid bin Walid radiallahu an. This is Khalid bin Walid radiallahu an. Why? Before destroying one of the superpowers, the superpowers run and Khalid bin Walid radiallahu an announces that you know what? If you were in the clouds and we were upon the earth, Allah the Almighty will raise us towards you or he will lower you towards us for battle. This is why I say and I ask, why would Khalid bin Walid radiallahu an say, the man intends one thing, Allah intends another. Why would Khalid bin Walid radiallahu an say that I dedicated my life in the way of Allah Azza wa Jalla? Why would Khalid bin Walid radiallahu an say that I like it on the battlefield more than I like it on my wedding night? Why would Khalid bin Walid radiallahu an say that you know what? On a rainy night, I'm wearing my shield with my sword, with my armor, looking again and again and again at the horizon, waiting for the sun to rise so I could jump on the battlefield for battle. Why would Khalid bin Walid radiallahu an say in the middle of the battle when the battle is fierce that I am the son of Walid, I am Khalid bin Walid, I am the pillar of Islam, I am Khalid bin Walid, I am the sword from the swords of Allah Azza wa Jalla. Why? Because he understood in the promise of Allah. He understood that Allah says that do not think those who are slain in the path of Allah as dead, but they're alive and Allah sustains them. He understood that Allah says that you are the best of nations that have been raised for mankind to enjoy what is good and forbid what is evil. He understood that the Messenger وسلم, said that the Muslim Ummah is like one body. If one limb is in pain, then the entire body is in pain. He understood that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the Muslim is a brother of another Muslim. He understood that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said this, this made Khalid bin Walid radiallahu an into the sword from the swords of Allah Azza wa Jalla. This is why he was the undefeated commander. This is why he was the undefeated ruler. This is why he was the undefeated general. This is why he was the undefeated conqueror. This is why he was the undefeated fighter. This is why he was known for his plan of attack. This is why he was known for his ploy. This is why he was known for his technique. This is why he was known for his leadership. This is why he was known for his courage. This is why he was known for his fortitude. This is why he was known for his military expeditions. This is why he was 
praised by the Persian governor. This is why the prince of Persia would praise him. This is why the priest of Byzantine would praise him. This is why he was undefeated in a hundred battles. This is why he broke nine swords in a battle. This is why the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave him a title. This is why Abu Bakr radiallahu an praised him. This is why Umar radiallahu an praised him. This is why he was the conqueror of Sham. Why? Because this is the commander. This is the conqueror. This is the ruler. This is the general. This is the son of Walid. This is Khalid bin Walid. This is the sword from the swords of Allah Azza wa Jalla. Who's the commander? Khalid bin Walid. Who's the general? Khalid bin Walid. Who's the ruler? Khalid bin Walid. Who's the soldier of Allah? Khalid bin Walid. Who's the destroyer of Sham? Khalid bin Walid. Who's the destroyer of the Persian empires? Khalid bin Walid. Who is the destroyer of the Roman empires? Khalid bin Walid. Who is the conqueror? of the entire area of Sham, it's Khalid bin Walid radiallahu an. And this is why my brothers, I say, if this is the commander, if this is the ruler, if this is the general, if this is the warrior, then why a man's mentioning Rivaldo, Ronaldo and Ronaldinho? If this is Khalid bin Walid, then why are people talking about some boxer or some UFC fighter? If this is Khalid bin Walid, then why are mans talking about some rap artist? If this is Khalid bin Walid, then why are mans talking about others? Then the conqueror of Sham Khalid bin Walid radiallahu an. And this is why I say, this day and age, we want to walk like them. We want to talk like them. The youths, they want to be like them. They get a buzz when someone says, you know what? You look like Tupac. You look like Biggie. But let me tell you something. The reality is, if your mother or if your father or if your daughter or if any of your family members want cancer and you was to give one of the footballers a call and say, you know what? Give me a couple of thousand pounds. Help me out. Wallahi, by Allah, they wouldn't even respond to you. They wouldn't give a toss about you. If this is the reality, then why are you trying to be like them and walk like them and talk like them? When you know they don't want to be like you, they don't want to talk like you, and they don't want to even look like you, then why are you following their ways when you have the best of commanders, Khalid bin Walid radiallahu an to take as an example. And this is the reality. Then the day of judgment on the plain of resurrection when there will be the fountain of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam colder than ice, sweeter than honey, so many cups that will outnumber the stars in the sky. And may Allah save us from this that there will be a group of people who will be bought. And the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will say to them, be off. Be off, be off. And this means that it could be a group of people who left the way of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companions. And may Allah save us from that. And this could be the outcome of abandoning the ways of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companions. But the reality is when it comes to the likes of Khalid bin Walid, when it comes to the likes of Abu Bakr, when it comes to the likes of Umar, when it comes to the likes of Uthman, when it comes to the likes of Ali, when it comes to the likes of Hassan, when it comes to the likes of Hussein, when it comes to the likes of Abdullah bin Abbas, when it comes to the likes of Abdullah bin Umar, when it comes to the likes of Abu Hanifa, when it comes to the likes of Imam Malik, when it comes to the likes of Imam Shafi'i, when it comes to the likes of Imam Ahmad, 
when it comes to the likes of Ibn Taymiyyah, when it comes to the likes of Ibn Qayyim, when it comes to the likes of Imam Bukhari, when it comes to the likes of Imam Muslim, when it comes to the likes of Imam Tirmizi, when it comes to the likes of Abu Dawood, when it comes to the likes of Hajar, when it comes to the likes of great scholars like this, you and I, we don't have a leg to stand on. But when it comes to Rivaldo, when it comes to Ronaldo, when it comes to Neymar, when it comes to Rooney, when it comes to any of these UFC fighters and boxers, people day in, day out, they will know every single thing about them. But when it comes to the likes of Khalid bin Walid, radiallahu an, mans don't have a leg to stand on. And the end of Khalid bin Walid radiallahu an is that he's on his deathbed. And he's saying that why did I not die in a battle? And one of his companions says, Oh Khalid, tell me, how can you die in a battle when you know the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam named you the sword of Allah. And if you had been defeated, it would have meant the sword of Allah has been broken and that could never ever happen. Khalid bin Walid radiallahu an, on his deathbed he's saying that I die in shame. I die as a camel dies. I die in shame. May the eyes of a coward never close even in sleep and his soul extracts. And this is the end of Khalid bin Walid radiallahu an. Lived like a warrior, walked like a warrior, and died as a warrior. And this is why, my brothers, we pray to Allah that the next woman that gives birth to a child make it so that she gives birth to the likes of Khalid bin Walid radiallahu anhu.